Hello, my name is Diego Casabuena and I am an ML practitioner at Spotify. Today, I'm very excited to be here and to present to you how Spotify is pushing boundaries with weights and biases. Our story begins with a company called Pods. At Pods, we built the world's first 60 second podcast preview feed. And to do this, we had to put together a very complex pipeline. To build this technology, we listened to RSS feeds the internet protocol where podcast content is published to. We had to download the audios, transcribe them, and pass them through a complex series of machine learning models that would output clips. And those clips would then be recommended and served to users in this clean app interface that you see on the right. Now, this is the work of a relatively small team of engineers and entrepreneurs from New York to Silicon Valley. And this team, met in all sorts of ways. Some people met the conventional ways of getting their companies acquired into Yahoo and working on previous companies together in the past. Others like me joined from fighting Filipino Cali martial arts, which is kind of cool. And actually the team was never together in the same room since most of this happened during the COVID-19 pandemic. Our founding team, Doug Imbruche, Seo Jumu, Rasmus Swixson, and Greg Pape did a fantastic job and a big shout out to them. I was fortunate enough to become the first employee at this company and to take on the task of generating machine learned clip previews. As of 2020, we were one of very few companies applying transformer technology into consumer applications. In particular, we're trying to build these podcast highlights. The podcast highlights are just clips around one minute long that tried to embody the episode, but also be highly engaging. For copyright reasons, we couldn't collage multiple pieces of a podcast together. So it's not exactly like a movie trailer, but it is made to the same effect. And there was no easy task. However, it came out of a product implication, which is we were displaying transcription on screen, which meant that we had transcriptions. And with transcriptions, we started using transformer models. We basically took a state-of-the-art technology and applied it to a different domain. Now, this company was acquired in 2021 by Spotify in order to accelerate audio discovery and podcast consumption. And here we are making podcast clips for the Spotify catalog. So when we arrived at Spotify, we were placed inside of a cohort called Listening Experiences, or LEX for short. Lex is a group of over 100 people working inside of personalization to bring you the best new experiences across all major content categories, including music, podcasts, and audiobooks. So you may have interacted with some of our products, including blends, enhance, mixes, such as daily mixes and genre mixes, as well as auto mix. So where does weights and biases come into play? Now, this becomes more of a personal story. I first interacted with weights and biases back in 2018 while working at a research group inside of NYU Center of Data Science under Professor Rob Fergus. More specifically, we were researching the pre-training and fine-tuning of transformer models. Chat GPT didn't exist and neither did all the higher versions of GPT. It was only GPT-1 and a model called BERT by Google. And back then, this was a hot topic too. We were trying to pre-train and fine tune many variants of these models using one of those old school Slurm systems where you publish uh, your jobs and you wait for it to be done and you just SSH into machines to see how things progress. Essentially, weights and biases was a game changer because we were training hundreds of variants of these things and we wanted to know that things were okay when we launched the jobs and that the, everything was tracked with no data loss and we were able to compare things afterwards. And that was pretty spectacular. And so I'm proud to have carried uh, weights and biases with me from academic research through startups and now into big companies such as Spotify. At startups, I continued using weights and biases. I worked in a couple, including one which I co-founded and I built modules for facial recognition and also collaborative recommendation. Weights and biases again, kept all my runs together. And then I landed at Pods, where we trained a ton of models, including transformers, 
including recommender systems, including graph neural networks. The transformer model was uh, still a novelty, and our challenges at the time were to take uh, the base recipes, those, fine, those, those pre-trained models, and fine-tune them on tasks that were important to us and not important to academia. Because again, at the time, there was a lot of publication around academic tasks and data sets, but not necessarily the things that we needed to do. So we had to go out and collect our own data, figure out whether the data was any good, fine-tune models, and ensure that these fine-tunings would actually transfer the learning from the base models. And in order to do that, we had to collect a lot of data and we had to train a lot of models. And the only way for us to keep this tractable in such a small team was to use weights and biases to keep our run comparisons and our analysis in one place. So then we got into Spotify and we procured the technology, continued using weights and biases for training runs. We've additionally started using weights and biases to profile inference when we have new models because that saves us time by checking the uh, system metrics when new models are running and ensuring that they're ready for production. Now, Spotify has great tools of its own, such as Backstage, where you can monitor teams, projects, workflows, data endpoints, A-B tests, and more. So you should check that out too for production purposes. For development purposes, it is my personal opinion that Weights and Biases is the best tool to keep all your runs together. And today, Weights and Biases at Spotify brings value to multiple teams at listening experiences and the broader Spotify community. So let's bring it back to the beginning. How are we pushing the boundaries? Well, quite literally, we are bringing the start and end offsets of audio closer together. I have two case studies for this. There is pods, which I already discussed, where we're using machine learning to extract features from podcast content, increasing our podcast understanding, and ultimately generating clips of many sorts to show to users as previews for podcasts. So the process is quite involved and there's a lot of models in use there's a lot of practitioners working on different pieces and a way to bring them all together under the same site is to use weights and biases. Now, there's a second example, cue points. Have you ever heard of Automix? It is a great feature that uh, basically blends music tracks together like a DJ would do it for you. And we use ML for this actually. And in this case, we push boundaries together by taking a little bit from the start of a track and a little bit from the end of the track and fading in and out from there, creating a cool effect that sounds like you're listening to a DJ. For this, we had to try many combinations of features and many types of models. And in order, again, to select the best model, we had to use weights and biases. And in particular, a cool feature that we used here was we needed to visualize some of this information. So we uploaded it as assets into weights and biases for our evaluation sets. And we were able to just listen to the clips and we were, we were able to listen to the tracks and um, it was very successful. We could then export it and send it for human evaluation. So that was a great lift. So there's many other use cases within Spotify for weights and biases. And there's many teams that started uh, testing out the technology or the service for their own products. And that includes the teams behind Enhance, Daily Mixes, and also tech research. And in tech research, we have very smart individuals working on the state of the art and bringing us new research such as speech diarization so some of us are using weights and biases. Some of us are testing it. What do we like about it? We've aggregated the feedback into three main categories. We believe that weights and biases is versatile. We believe that it helps us aggregate data really well and that it increases our presentation skills. The tool is versatile, meaning you can take the same code and run it across multiple frameworks, infrastructure setups, and model types. And so it is very portable and easy to use and easy to learn for different uh, ML engineers. Now, the aggregation is super important because when you have a lot of people using the tool and training all these sorts of different models across projects and teams, Weights and Biases brings it all under one roof so that you can share all the information of what one team learns with another. And that is very important to us. Additionally, all the tools to sort and filter the data and compare metrics and generate uh, insights 
is really valuable because it saves a lot of engineering time that you can just do it on the web uh, interface with just a few clicks. The filtering, sorting, and other tools that exist on the platform to help us filter our data, figure out our best runs, and which models we should push for human evaluation or to production are great because it saves a lot of engineering time. And more recently, we've been trying out the hyperparameter tuning and that is great because that way we can send out batches of training runs and see summarized results afterwards with no additional effort. And finally, there's presentation. So for presentation, there's uh, a number of visualizations that are actually important to us uh, as we train our models. Some models have specifics, like if you use uh, classical machine learning and you're training a forest uh, or a tree-based uh, model, like a random forest, it, there's actually specific tools such as feature importance plots that one can use to decide whether the features that you're using are actually important or not. Weights and biases has one line of plots that you can uh, basically instantiate with one line of code. And that just shows on your dashboard every time you train the same model. And then when you train multiple models, it compares them such that uh, you know how the feature importances, for example, change across uh, different runs. And so that is pretty cool because, again, you get a lot for free for a lot of code. And so that is important to us. Also, the fact that once you have all the runs logged and once you have uh, all these charts, you don't have to export them or save them somewhere or bringing assets from outside. All your information is in one place. And so you can literally just drag and drop it into these reports where you then add some uh, text and send them to your leadership your, uh, to share it for your team. It's great for presentations and uh, again, for information share. So we also really like that feature. And then finally, I would like to compliment the technical support, uh, which has been uh, incredibly helpful to us. Um, very prompt and very responsive. And they've solved many of our of the issues that we've had um, as we were integrating weights and biases into Spotify. And they have even acted on some of the feedback that we have given them to improve the app. So we really appreciate that. Now that's the story of how we found weights and biases, how it came to Spotify, how people are using it, what they like it. And thank you so much for listening.